Oh, he's going to put it up to 400%. Yeah, let's, let's, go. let's do it. I think one hit and I'm dead, probably. All right, let's see. Oh! <laughs> Guys, welcome to the Humble Game stream. My name is Reagan Catherine, and I am here with Hanyiki. Today, he mm -hmm. is the co-producer and also at, over at Pocket Trap. So we are so excited for him to be here, co-founder and producer over at Pocket Trap. I literally just said that I wasn't going to mess it up, and then I messed yeah. it up. <laughs> and so one of their games is Dodgeball Academia. So if you guys yeah. have not seen it already, you guys are in for a treat. It's so much fun. We played the demo on our channel just a little bit ago um, and then also we're going to have a Nikki play uh, part of the first chapter today okay so really quick just before we jump mm -hmm. into it for anyone who is new can you tell us just a little bit about dodgeball academia so it's setting it's fiction yeah. everything about it sure yeah so dodgeball academia is a sports rpg game and that takes place in a dodgeball school so kind of like Think of Hogwarts, but with dodgeball instead of magic. That's what. That's how we usually explain it. And you play as Otto, which is a, a rookie student, and he has a background of being in a in a judge school. So he's very excited to be uh, entering a school that is focused on on playing dodgeball instead of rules and and barring stuff. So what? like kind of came up with the concept of making a school surrounded by dodgeball? I think it, it comes first with our main major inspirations, which was um, both us at Pocket Trap and Ivan, which is the co-creator of the Dodgeball Academia universe. We are both very uh, nostalgic, nostalgic and we were also big fans of games from Camelot, like Mario, Mario Tennis and Mario Golf, which were RPGs for the Game Boy Color. And we grew up playing those um, sports games that had some aspects of RPG. Uh, and we really wanted to kind of bring that back somehow. And we also were, were feeling very nostalgic and we loved games, uh, dodgeball games from back in the day. like like Super Dodgeball and some other um, classic Japanese dodgeball games. So these are all of the teachers at the school, correct? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They I, are remember, the... I remember the, mm -hmm. one of these teachers from the demo because he made us play mm -hmm. in the parking lot. Yeah, that's, that's Makako. Um, he's the strength teacher, so well, mostly um, most of his... His classes are 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 strength based, so he likes to um, see their students um, handle stream situations like the, the the parking lot. So okay, so I know that you are the co-founder and producer, but can you tell us a little bit, kind of like what your day looks like, what your role uh, in creating dodgeball was? I know we also mm -hmm. talked about um, how you did a bunch of spreadsheets. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's probably the the number one role of the producer. But not just spreadsheets, but make sure the the project goes forward and and the team's on the same page. Everyone's doing um, their task correctly. And but I have also a game design background, and uh, I did some stuff, especially in the beginning. I I helped a lot. Lorenzi and Renato, which are the programmer and the game designer for the game, we are always talking and we are always sharing um, tasks. So, yeah, my my main role is kind of putting the team together and making sure we deliver uh, the best possible game on time, on schedule. So, <laughs> yeah. The, the, the chat is saying spreadsheets, the backbone of all good teams. So here, here we have the auto joining the ceremony that happens every every year in Dodgeball Academia, and they are in front of this monument which has a ball that is always spinning. This is actually like an artifact of the of the Dodgeball universe, 
and you can see that we have like a trail um, below the, the monument, which is the original trail because uh, once upon a time a hero threw, a, threw this ball on this rock and, and ended like a, a great dodgeball war. I think most people that watched the Lord trailer um, saw, saw the principal talking about it. But um, the, the ball kept spinning ever since, and the school, we have this background lore that the school is kind of powered by this ball and, and its kinetic energy, so... What is one of your favorite things about dodgeball? So it could be like a part of the game, um, a character, just anything and why. I think what I like the most is the overall vibe of the game, like this vibrant school. I, I love um, games that take place on school and, and I also love, love sports. I, I'm crazy. I watch everything. I watch uh, American sports. I watch soccer i watch i'm watching everything for, from the olympics so i'm i'm very glad that we did a game on this genre so yeah and it's probably coming the out at the perfect time matches and, yeah yeah <laughs> oh yeah and also one more thing that i really like is lorenzi which is the programmer and also one of the co-founders of pocket trap he he made like a super interesting feature that I wasn't expecting at all, which is the language learning mode. So this is something very interesting, especially for us Brazilians that had to uh, learn in, at least English, sometimes some of Japanese when we were kids. And I'll show after this, this match, I don't think I can turn it on right now, but um, it's a feature that you can um, choose two different languages and and it shows both languages at the same time so you can kind of compare what what the characters are saying in one English and in one one English in one language and the other so learning mode you can turn it on and you choose the the display language <gasps> here so now we have and I'll go back to so see don't leader okay i'm watching you and and down there we can see like sem jogar nisto no chão hein tô de olho so and you can cycle through it, the different languages that we have and we also have some other accessibility options that i i like to show yeah so um for example we have lots of flashes on the on this game so if it bothers someone or for some health uh Re health reason you need to turn it off you can you can also uh lower the screen shaking which we have a lot and the difficulty in the game is very interesting because you can like tune it to your own preference so if you're having lots of trouble you can just for example zero percent you just won't take damage anymore so you can just uh, and you have God mode. Breeze through all the all the dodgeball matches, That's and you can also increase if it's too you can make it you. so <laughs> you can make it four hundred percent. Yeah, do like one thirty percent. The amount of tabs you have open is the damage taken. <laughs> yeah, and and as a good RPG, of course, we have lots of equipment and items to use. Since I'm ju just began the game, I don't have any, but. I can't imagine whoever is out here playing dodgeball at 400%. I'm quite impressed because I was playing the demo and I was like, it was like you won. And I was like, did I though? Um, and so also I know that you guys also worked on cartoons before. So what would be like the major difference of working on a video game versus a cartoon? On cartoons, you have more freedom, more creative freedom for telling stories because you know, you can use many different, depending on your budget, of course, but you can use different camera angles, um, um, different backgrounds, different characters, and the game is usually more limited. On our games, at least, that are, we have a smaller team, we need to be very creative with our limitations. And, for example, to tell the story, we need to good, make good emotes. We have a li very limited number of animations that we can use, like the victory, the lose, lose animation, and 
we kind of recycle those animations for both the matches and during cutscenes. Sometimes we use like the loose animation to make a character look sad, for example. Okay, so the <laughs> chat wants to know a little bit more about the art process for Dodgeball. So for the characters, first, first Ivan, which is the art director, he catches the, the characters and also makes a model sheet, which is a turnaround of the character. And after the character is approved, we, we move on to um, getting these characters inside the program that we use for animating, which is for Dodgeball, we use it do, uh, Adobe Animate. And, and Ivan would go there and try to separate every pieces of the characters. Dodgeball Academia has a traditional style of animation, so it's all frame by frame. Some games make it different, like they use pegs and they just build like a skeleton for the characters and they, they use this bone technique to animate them. But for Dodgeball, they had to redraw every single sprite. And yeah, and after that, the animator would get the would, would get a list of animations that we needed, and the, this model sheet inside Animate, and they started animating, <laughs> and then I would go there and export this sprite sheet when they they finish it. So, oh my gosh, okay. And can you share just a piece of game advice that was given to you that helped inspire you, or that you would want to give on to other people? I think you need to train a lot, especially in the beginning. It's always good to make small experiments and try to uh, learn different things from making small games. You don't want to try to start by making like a huge game. You need to start very small. <laughs> and um, one thing that I like to apply on our games at least is try to, to find like a niche or find a specific element or genre for, for for your game that can make it pop inside because we have lots and lots of like shooting games and metroidvanias and so it's very difficult to it will be easier for you to market your game i guess so i remember in the yes. demo there was a side quest about finding glasses which i could never find but are there <laughs> are there multiple side quests in every chapter yes for sure yeah each chapter has different side quests and also side activities that you can do. And do you have to uh, finish the side quest in that chapter or does it carry on throughout the game? Uh, I think there is only one that you can play um, in any chapter. Most of them are, are episode specific, so you need to make sure you play through um, all of them or otherwise you end up skipping some some side quests. So guys, make sure you're playing through all of the side quests when you get them. Find the glasses. I didn't find the glasses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go, gotta go into RPG completionist mode. I know. <laughs> That's gonna be me. I'm also the worst. I'll get like a million chocolate truffles and then I'll never feed them to Otto. I'll be like, no, I have to hoard it. What if I need it for later? I do the same thing. I usually end up finishing the game with lots of items in my bag because, <laughs> because yeah, because what if I needed them and then I finish yeah. the game and I have all of them and I'm like, well, well, exactly. Yeah, it yeah, happens a lot with me too. Maybe I need a million chocolate truffles. I need all of them. I really, I'm just playing the. I'm adding an extra level of difficulty to myself. By not using any items. Oh, he's going to put it up to 400%. Yeah, let's, let's, go. let's do it. I think one hit and I'm dead, probably. Ah, right, let's see. Oh! <laughs> yeah. Oh, dang. You were doing though. pretty good, though. I think Was that <laughs> one hit or two hits? Just one, but he had, like, this trophy, which uh, has multi-hitting, so... Oh, what a KO. <laughs> But no worries, we can continue the story. You are not obligated to win. But you oh, have different good. dialogue if you win. <laughs> but Haniki, thank you so much for coming and joining us on the stream today. We had such a great time. It was such a pleasure getting to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you. Very excited to see everyone get their hands on, on the game. Hopefully, everyone will enjoy and have a good time. We had a good time play, uh, making it, so... 
Can't wait to see everyone play it. Yep, absolutely. Okay, guys, thank <laughs> you so much. And until next time, bye. Thank you.